welcome. Today's special feature is multiplication and division strategies. For third grade, the goal is for you to memorize all of your multiplication facts. However, we know that takes a little time. So for today, we're going to focus on some strategies that makes learning multiplication and division facts just a bit easier. Let's go. Some S&Ps or standards of mathematical practices to keep in mind. I also like to refer to them as smart math practices. As you learn these strategies, it's important that you're able to explain your thinking and also look for patterns. Now we will review a few things that you need to keep in mind to help you in learning your multiplication and division facts. For instance, the commutative property. You've learned that before and it simply means regardless of the order, the result stays the same. Your addition facts will come in handy as well as skip counting by twos, fives, and tens. Here are some key vocabulary words that we will be using throughout today's lesson. We're just going to go over a few. Factors are the numbers that are being multiplied, as we can see down here below. The four and two are factors. And we also have what we call the product, the answer or result of a multiplication problem. For division, we have the dividend, which is the amount being divided, as we see here, the four. We have the divisor, the quantity by which another quantity is being divided, which is the two here. And we have the quotient, the answer or result of a division problem. Now these anchor charts are here for you to review and you can always come back to them for more information. Let's start with the twos or what we call the doubles. When you have two as a factor, think addition doubles and double the other factor. Here we have a good example. Two times five. You take the other factor and you just simply double it. And you know your doubles. Five plus five is 10. So we know that two times five equals 10. Or if we reverse it, five times two also equals 10. And this brings to mind the commutative property where it doesn't matter which factor comes first, the product will still be the same, whether two times five or five times two, as we see in this example. Multiplication chart. Do you notice a pattern? Well, if you look closely, you may notice that each of the digits in the ones place is an even number and that the digits repeat 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. That's a pattern. Okay, now it's your turn to try. We have the problem 2 times 8. Don't forget, when the factor is 2, you double the other factor. All right, let's see what you got. If you said 16, you're correct. 8 times 2 is 16 because when we double the other factor, 8 plus 8 is 16. Next up, 5 facts. When 5 is a factor, simply count by 5s. For example, we have 5 times 3. So I will count by 5 3 times. 5, 10, 15. I end up stopping at 15, so the product of 5 and 3 is 15. And I can write it two ways. 5 times 3 equals 15, or 3 times 5 equals 15. Again, an example of the commutative property. Now, let's see if we can notice some patterns here in our multiplication chart. Do you notice a pattern? Well, if you look closely, you might notice that each number in the ones place ends with either a 5 or a 0. Did you pick that up? I bet you did. Now it's your turn to try. 
Here's a problem, five times two. Again, with the fives strategy, you skip count by five, the number of times based on the other factor. So here we'll skip count by five, four times. So what did you get? If you said 20, you're correct. We have our zeros and ones. When zero is a factor, the product will be zero. When one is a factor, the product will be the other factor. So here we have an example of how the zeros and one strategy works. But keep in mind, even if the other factor is a large number, the rule still applies. For example, zero times four is zero, nine times zero is zero. And with the ones, one times seven is seven, and six times one is one. Let's take a look at our multiplication chart. Do you notice that there's a pattern? The numbers that are multiplied by zero are all zeros. And the numbers that are multiplied by one end up being the other factor. Now it's your turn to try. We have zero times eight and one times four. All right, if you said zero times eight is zero and one times four is four, you got it. Let's move on. Okay, next up are our nines timetable. So a nine is a factor. You're going to replace the nine for a 10 and subtract one set. Here's how it works. Here we have an example of nine times seven. Step one, we're going to replace the nine with a 10. We're going to keep the other factor the same and multiply. So 10 times seven is 70. It makes it easier because I can simply count by tens. And when I have counted 10 seven times, I end up with 70. Our last step reminds us to subtract a set. So we're going to subtract 70 minus seven, which gives us 63. So we know that nine times seven equals 63. Taking a look at our multiplication chart, do you see a pattern? Well, if you look closely, you'll notice that the digits in the ones place increases by one, whereas the digits in the ones place decreases by one. Now it's your turn to try. Find the product of nine and four. If you said 36, you've got it. Let's move right along. Here we have the six times table. When six is a factor, half the six, multiply, then double the product. In this example, we have six times seven. First, we're gonna replace the six with the three because we know three is half of six. Second step says to multiply to three times seven, which gives us 21. Then we're going to double the product. 21 plus 21, that's a little typo, equals 42. Taking a look at our multiplication chart, we see the multiples of six. If you look closely, all of the numbers are even. That's a hint. Your turn to try. Six times four. Did you get it? 24. You're correct. If you half the six, made it a three, multiply by four, which gives you 12, then you double it. 12 and 12, 24. So we know that six times four equals 24. Now we have our seven times table. When seven is a factor, you're going to replace the seven with a five and then add a double. So here we have seven times four. You're going to replace the seven with a five. 
In other words, you're going to simply break the five apart into five and two. Then you're gonna multiply the five and the two by the other factor. As we see over here, we broke the seven up to five and two, and we multiplied them each by four. Five times four is 20, two times four is eight. The third step says, well, we're gonna simply add them together. 20 plus eight equals 28. Taking a quick look at our multiplication chart, we see the multiples of seven. Now it's your turn to try. Find the product of seven and eight. Remember, with the seven times table, you simply break up the seven into five and two, multiply it by the other factor. Did you end up with 56? If you did, you got it. Next up, we have the eight times table. The strategy for the eight times table is similar to the one that we use for the seven times table. Here, we're going to separate the eight into five and three, and then multiply it by the other factor, and finally add. As we can see here in this example, eight times three. We broke the eight up into five and three, and we multiplied the five times three, which is the other factor, gave us 15, and then three times three, which is nine. The final step is for us to add the 15 and the nine, giving us 24. Taking a look at our multiplication table, once again, we see the multiples of eight. Eight being an even number, do you notice here that all of the numbers or the products are even? Now it's your turn to try. Find the product of eight times eight. If you got 64, you are right. With this strategy, we just simply separate the eight into five and three, we multiply it by the other factor, and then add the products, giving us 64. Moving right along to our division facts. Division and multiplication are closely related. So if you know your multiplication facts, it makes it that much easier to learn your division facts. It's just easy peasy. To solve for our division facts, we'll be using inverse operation. To help, we're gonna make use of fact families. So let's take a look at this example. 24 divided by three. To find the quotient, we must think about it this way. Instead of 24 divided by three, we're going to use the inverse and ask ourselves what number times three equals 24. Knowing your fact families can help you in answering that question. Because if you know what number times three gives you 24, then you can figure out what 24 divided by three is. So here we have our fact families. Three times eight equals 24, and the reverse is true. Therefore, since we know that eight times three is 24, then 24 divided by three equals eight. Let's try another example. This time we have 20 divided by five. And what is it that we have to ask ourselves? Well, we wanna think of it in terms of multiplication. So we're going to use the inverse and ask ourselves, what number times five equals 20? Here are your fact families. We know that four times five equals 20 and the reverse is true. Five times four equals 20. So if we know that is true, then we know that 20 divided by five must equal four. All of these numbers are related, creating our fact family. This next one, you give it a try.
Did you get it? 21 divided by 3 equals 7. If you got that, you're right. You've got it. These are proven strategies, so try them out. Done and done.